Okay, here's an example for finding the surface area of a triangular prism. Uh, the instructions say draw a net for the right triangular prism shown. After that, we will use the net to find the surface area of the triangular prism. This example, which is in your notes, already has the triangular prism drawn and has the net for the triangular prism drawn. However, since this is coming from our high school level geometry textbook, it also has a hidden embedded problem of finding the length of this side right here. Finding the measure of an unknown side of a triangle uh, sometimes requires trigonometry, sometimes requires the Pythagorean theorem. We don't have to know how to do that just yet. I'm going to give you that number. However, by the time you get to high school geometry, you're going to have to be able to find that on your own using trigonometry or Pythagorean theorem. Knowing a little bit about that, this length should be five centimeters. During this chapter test, I'll provide you with that measurement. When we get into third or fourth quarter of algebra, I'll expect you to be able to find that on your own in preparation for geometry next year. Okay, so if we have that measurement, we're now going to go ahead and look at this and make sure that we can visually see that this triangular prism can be written as a net, an unfolded three-dimensional object written two-dimensionally. So if you look at this right here, we're going to go ahead and identify the bottom. The bottom being this face here. It's 12 by 10. And if we look at the way that it's laid out, that is corresponding to C. Now, if any point in time you want to pause this, you can look down here at our interval, uh, that, unit, that one unit equal two centimeters, and you can actually count the spaces, not the dots, but the spaces between the dots, and verify that that is actually 10 centimeters by 12 centimeters according to the scale. Now, we need to match up, match up the measurements. This is supposed to be our 10 centimeter, and this is supposed to be our 12 centimeter. Next, we have this face right here. Perhaps we can call it the right side, which is going to correspond with D here. Once again, as we're looking at the net, we need to be able to visualize that this could be folded up, sort of like a transformer turning back into the car that can be folded up to form the triangular prism. A net is only an accurate representation of the three-dimensional object if it truly folds back up. We look at this side back here as rectangle B. And once again, we need to match up the uh, side measurements with the information given to us on the picture. So as it looks, I have a 10 centimeters. Since this was 10 centimeters, I'm probably talking about this measurement right here. And this is the five centimeters of that face. So I'll put a five right here. And lastly, we have the two triangles, which if you can imagine them folding down as the green and the red folded out, then this E would be here, which is going to be 12 by five. And then A, which is here, is also going to take that measurement and transfer it over to here. So that's 5. And this is 12. Now, it's worth noting, I forgot to write 13. 13 is the side of this face, which would be 13 here. It's worth noting that, that this is also 13. But if I take A and I bring it out over here, I mean the triangle face name here. We have a 5 and a 12, which as you may recall from a previous section, are the only two numbers that we're going to need to find the area of this. They're set perpendicular to each other, so we have a base and an altitude, or else we can call it a height. And this 13 is not necessary in order to find the surface area. So we're going to come down over here, and we're going to use the net to find the surface area. So we need... each of these areas. Once again, if you remember from the notes, the surface area is the sum of the areas of the faces of the three-dimensional object. So we'll go ahead and find the areas of A, B, C, D, and E. A 
is a triangle of, once again, uh, base 5 and height 12. So area is going to be 1 half the base times the height. 1 half 5 times 12 is the same thing as half of 12 times 5. 6 times 5 is 30. And we were dealing with centimeters. So this will be 30 centimeters squared. A and E are congruent triangles. They have the same shape, which means they're going to have the same area as well. I'll jump down to E and I'll write 30 centimeters squared again. B, if I look at B, that's why I've written all these measurements down so I don't have to keep looking up at the object. B has a base of 5 and a height of 10. We're doing uh, area of a parallelogram. This special parallelogram is known as a rectangle, so we can also call that area length times width. Either way, it's 5 times 10. We have an area of 50 centimeters squared. There's nothing else congruent to that, so that's the only time we'll be able to use those measurements. C has a length of 12 and a width of 10. Again, it's a rectangle, length times width, so we have 12 times 10 is 120 centimeters squared. And then lastly, we have D. D here, 13 by 10 special parallelogram we call a rectangle. 13 times 10 is the area, which would be 130 centimeters squared. Now that we have each individual face's area, we can then find the sum of the individual areas. 30 and 50 is 80. Add that to 120. We're up to 200, 330, and we have 360 together centimeters squared. This unit of measure right here is very important. Some students have a lot of trouble with it because you may think three-dimensional object, it should have centimeters cubed. But we're not finding the volume. We'll do that tomorrow. This is still an area. We talked in class about the surface area representing the amount of cardboard necessary to make a cereal box. The amount of aluminum necessary to make uh, a Coca-Cola can or the amount of wrapping paper necessary to uh, wrap a present if we don't consider any of the overlap with wrapping papers or cardboard box or aluminum cans. Uh, just, just the amount of surface space, surface area that it has. I'm going to check my measurements one more time. 80, that's 200, 330, 360. So 360 centimeters squared for area. And I think that's it. That is the surface area of this triangular prism uh, by using nets to find surface area.